Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today um, is another Halloween look, obviously. As you can see by the title, we're doing Luna Matthews or a moth look or a butterfly because her colorings are fairly butterfly-esque. Um, but for this look, I did also make the props except for the antenna, but I made her little bug glasses as well as her wings, which I will show. I will show the wings, the wings I have recorded, but the bug glasses I didn't get a chance to record because I painted them while I was watching a movie with my family, so I didn't want to turn on all of my filming equipment, but it's really standard. I did record me sketching and cutting them out, I just didn't record me painting and putting on the individual sequins and painting them but I will show you them in the video in a moment but we're going to be doing a moth look those of you who don't know who Luna Matthews is because this is who the look is based off of she is another monster high, monster high character similar to Iris Clops for the Cyclops look that I did um, but she looks like so So she's got yellow skin, her wings, her little bug glasses, her antenna, and her black and red hair, all of which we will be creating or recreating today. Um, the only thing I don't think I will be doing is, I don't think I'm going to paint myself yellow. Yellow doesn't really come up on my skin or at least after taking photos and stuff there's not a huge texture or a huge color difference but I will play around with that I may just stick with my skin tone um the eyes I'm gonna be pulling inspiration from pigeon pie art on Instagram she has this eye look that she does or the style of eye that she does for almost all of her um all, almost all of her looks so I will be drawing inspiration from that to do the eye makeup for this I want to show you as well the goggles or the glasses piece that I made so it looks like this and this will be going basically here on my forehead a little higher up Plus, I have the I have the wings there in the other room. I painted them. Just to explain this a little bit, because there's not going to be a cut of there's no footage on like I said on this. So I made it out of cardboard, obviously, recycled cardboard. Uh, the actual moth was painted with water activated paint. The bug eye portion of it is all sequins that I got from um, Pat McGrath. So I purchased lip glosses and um, an under eye setting powder from Pat McGrath, both of which are in my spring makeup unboxing video. And her packaging comes with a ton of sequins, so I repurposed them for the bug eye look and these are all hand placed with just regular school glue there's a few gems on the outside just for some textural difference and yeah that's about it i am going to be sticking this to just a basic plastic headband i have tons of these they come in handy just for making any sort of prop that i kind of want to just be able to place on my head um, I usually either stick them onto a headband or I stick them onto or I glue them onto a bobby pin so that I can put them in my hair. For this, because it's going to be sitting on my forehead, obviously I can't use a bobby pin, so I'm going to be sticking it to this, like so, so that I can place it and it will sit on my forehead. So we'll be doing that. Uh, there will be a clip, like I said, for the wings that I will insert um, further down in the video. So I think we should just get started. 
this is going to be another voiceover because again i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to be doing and just for the halloween time frame it's just easier to edit a video with a voiceover so i will be switching to voiceover momentarily but yeah if you just want to chill with me watch me paint you can grab a snack grab something to drink and uh let's get started so come on give me love I'ma show you how to move, how to move with my body Come hit me with your touch and make me wanna say Alright, so let's get started by laying down these brows So I'm just spraying water onto a glue stick, applying it liberally to the eyebrows Going through with a spoolie to comb the product through and press the brows down flat to my face I'm going over with the glue stick again so i don't respray the glue stick i just leave it as is so that it's tacky and then going in with a loose powder and a packing brush a small dense packing brush i'm going to stamp the powder into the brows this is going to fill in any of the holes to make this as smooth as possible i am doing this while the glue is still slightly tacky going in with a fan brush just to brush off any of the excess powder so that it doesn't interfere with the paint going forward now i'm drawing out the eye shape for this look you can see i struggle a little bit with the placement and how big i want this and the shape and the size all of that um, but i'm just using a brown color pop eyeliner you do not need to use this eyeliner specifically this is just for sketching purposes you can use anything that makes sense to you either something close to your skin tone or something close to the color of the look that you're gonna do so like yellow in this instance because i'm going to be painting my face yellow but you just want to make it easy for you to hide but you can also see it so i wouldn't go with a vibrant color that has nothing to do with the look that you're doing that's going to get difficult to cover this is darker than my skin tone but it will just look like shadow once we're done so that's the idea behind that now for yellow paint it it's not the greatest it comes out really streaky most of the time and on my skin tone it doesn't always show up depends on the quality of the paint so i'm doing two coats i'm going in with a paintbrush first which obviously is very streaky as you can see and i'm going in with a kabuki style brush to add the second layer and this is going to really smooth it out make sure that there's no lines no streaks and apply it as opaque as possible so this is the darkest and most vibrant i could get the yellow to come out without having to put like a white base down first and i'm using all mayron water activated paints for this look so when it comes to using water activated paint you kind of have to bounce around the look so while i'm waiting for the face to dry i'm doing the iris I'm doing the iris first because I don't want to paint this over the white. It'll mix and make the iris kind of a milky color. So I'm trying to do these individually. So now we're going in with the white while I wait for the iris to dry because I can put the pupil over the iris no problem because it's black and as long as the paint underneath is dry they shouldn't mix and it should layer on just fine. But when working with white, you kind of want to put the white exactly where you want the white to go and not have too many colors interfering with it. So I'm doing the white first and then we will apply the pupil with the black momentarily. So the eyes are especially when you're doing two eyes, it's very difficult because you want to make sure they're looking in the same direction, which is hard because you're never looking at both eyes forward, especially when you're working on them. So it just takes practice to make them not look cross-eyed. Right now, they look like they're too far apart. Um, they need to be turned in a little bit, but that's just something you do with trial and error. So I'm using the Norvina Volume 3 palette for this look because tonally, it is the contour and highlight 
to the yellow. So I'm adding a bright yellow under the eyes, not necessarily for highlighting purposes, but more just for dimension to make the eyes look more real. And obviously they don't look real because their proportions to my face are much larger than they need to be. But we can make them look like they're actually there. So I added some yellow just to bring that part of the face forward and to add dimension. Now I'm going in to do the contour and this is a orange and a brown mixed together. So when contouring and highlighting a skin color such as this, so if you're doing a non-traditional skin color, you need non-traditional contours and highlights. You just want to take a look at that color wheel and aim for deeper and lighter tones of the shade that you're working with or of the color that you're working with. Today I'm doing very non-traditional contouring, especially with the nose, so the corners and the bridge and the tip are heavily contoured. I really wanted a different kind of look for this face as the rest of the proportions are thrown off because of the eyes so I just wanted to exaggerate everything else because why not especially with the eye socket here I really wanted to make it look sunk in so you can see the peak at the top inner corners that's created and this is typically a technique I use for when I do Tim Burton characters it really makes the eyes look sunken in and to make these look real that helps so making it look like they're really pushed in if it looks like they're just hovering over the face because they're obviously fake it looks obviously fake because it's hovering over the face so making them look sunken in really helps in this i'm just going in with a deeper color and a smaller brush just to define the lines without doing black per se same with the contour on the cheeks this is just going to make it look really sharp and create even more depth So I'm going in with blush and this is just another eyeshadow shade from the Norvina palette. I wasn't 100% sure if I liked this just because of the spacing between the eyes and the contour but it made it look more cartoony so I was okay with that. I'm going in with a P. Louise base for the eyes. Now because my skin color is much darker than the yellow I wanted a base for the eyeshadows otherwise the eyeshadows would come out much darker than in contrast to the face which is fine but it's not the look that I was going for so I put down a base it's also easier to blend out eyeshadows over an eyeshadow base versus the paint sometimes if you're blending too much you can lift the paint and that is not something I wanted to run with the yellow so I put down a blank base so I did a halo eye for this look you can do any sort of eye look that you want you have a huge eyelid space for this so you can get really creative if you want but I just wanted a halo eye I found that this gives the most realistic dimension to make the eyes look like they're real obviously that's my goal I just sprayed water on that brush to pack on the eyeshadow and then I blended it out to make it more sparse around the outsides I'm going in with this elf liquid glitter eyeshadow on camera it didn't do all that much but in person it did look a little bit more sparkly more dimensional i'm not a huge fan of this eyeliner in retrospect i would have just left the wing out but to each their own it's kind of late now now i'm using the warrior 2 palette by juvia's place one of my favorite powers or one of my favorite palettes for contouring details into a look so not necessarily for the face contour but for such as this the eyes for instance this is just adding various different shadows to the look to make it look more realistic because the face does cast a lot of shadows all the features cast their own shadow so this is the purpose for the black and the dark browns that i'm using here going in with some more paint to do the highlights on the eyes i think i did too many highlights or i don't think they were big enough but something about this was weird looking and i'm not a fan but it is what it is 
doing the eyelashes you can paint on top eyelashes if you prefer it's a little hard because you would need your eyes to be closed in order to do it so that the illusion comes across but yeah you can do you can paint on the upper eyelashes as well now following the theme of having dramatic shapes in this look i did a pointed cupid's bow and then extended out the mouth corners like in the inspo pick specifically and it looked kind of clownish but still cartoony in the same way which still fit the theme so i was okay with how it turned out and then i went in with this dark blue lipstick because i couldn't find my black lipstick but it read pretty much the same way it looks fairly black in this picture now i'm doing the collar so on some of her pictures she has a different outfit where she has a collar on which i love that and it's easier to paint black than it is to paint yellow so i'm doing her collar here and to give dimension to this so that it didn't just look like i painted my chest black i used a fan brush and gray paint to do the lines and you'll see it in a moment after I finish painting my chest. To do this the brush has to be fairly wet so that it separates into various lines and you can paint like six lines at a time going across and once this dries it won't look so stark and it will just look like a textured collar piece. So I used two lashes for this look to have to go across the distance of it but the first pair I didn't end up using, I ended up using two RD Beauty Lashes, but I'm going to be taking over momentarily. Okay, so, back a bit. Um, my camera was dying, so I just turned it off, finished the look, um, all I did was add the, all I did was put on the wig, I put it into pigtails, it's nothing to write home about. Um, <laughs> This wig is barely on my head, so we're just going to not pay attention to that. I changed the outer lashes to another pair of RD Beauty lashes. The lashes I was originally going to wear were huge, like they were way too much for the fake eye. This is our little head or our glasses situation. It actually came out really nice. I quite happy I did stick it on the headband like I said I was going to I'm wearing gloves to match the collar that I painted so this is supposed to be in one of her looks she has this um, black collar I am wearing clothes I'll be so the here is the illusion for the eyes with my eyes closed wanted to give her really really big eyes because she's a bug gloves so this is very specifically a moth because of the muted so like the brown the black the, the muted color tones is more like a fall color or like halloween coloring instead of like bright colorful butterfly colors but the piece the resistance the center is a painted because that's what goes on the back but here are oh, here are the wings these are just craft wire as the support it goes on like a backpack and it's just recycled cardboard and acrylic paint to make the wings i did record it i will insert I will insert that footage here.
But yeah, they're not the most sturdy things, but they will work for this instance. If you were gonna wear this out, like if you wanted to wear this out, you would have to paint the backs of the pieces um, just the same way. Because I only had one side, I was using recycled cardboard for this. I had one side cardboard. So I used my Harry Potter Lego set box. Um, in order to paint both the back and the front, you would need just plain cardboard. I didn't have that, but this for me serves a purpose. If you want to wear this out, you would need to paint the fronts and backs of the wings. You could also buy wings. Um, I found in the butterfly moth department there wasn't much pickings. There were all those like cape style wings and I didn't I didn't want that. <laughs> I wanted structured wings, so that's why I made them out of cardboard. And you can switch out the craft wire for actual straps so you can get like elastic. Um, which would work great if you got elastic and you just adhered it in a loop, you could slip your arms into it and that would keep it more sturdy. Um, but I had craft wire and I only need this for this purpose, so craft wire it was for me. Um, as well as the headband, but if you were gonna wear this out, like I said, you wouldn't have to do the entire intricacies at the front on the back as well. Um, you could just paint, paint the back a solid color. For me, the back of this is just like a solid blue. From the same cardboard box i would probably make it a solid color that you're using so maybe like black or red or something but you don't have to do the full you don't have to do the full front on the back of this you might want to hide the headband more um but yeah i think this is a very interesting take on a moth it does read moth, like you got the big, the eyes. Um, it kind of looks clownish in the face department, but then coupled with everything else, I think it pulls through. It looks like Luna as well, obviously, because we have her two main pieces, three main pieces. Um, but yeah, yeah, so the craft wire is not very sturdy. You could also use just thicker craft wire. Um, but the thicker it is, it'd probably get pretty uncomfortable. So yeah, if, I, if you were looking to do this as an actual practical costume, the elastic would be probably the best fix for straps for this. And then you can just wear it like a backpack. But essentially, here are the wings. And I think that really pulls everything together. So yeah, that that will conclude our or my tutorial on Luna Matthews or just a moth in general. I think this could be used as any moth costume. It doesn't necessarily have to be Luna, although you look like Luna. Um, I think it reads as a moth regardless if you're aware of who the character is from Monster High or not. If you want to just make butterfly wings you can just make butterfly wings and just have butterfly wings for the sake of having butterfly wings i love wings in a costume that's why i have so many different pairs but uh this is the first time i've made them and i am thoroughly impressed and happy with how they came out because um the paint that i used was phenomenal saturation is beautiful the opaqueness is beautiful so yeah that will be my full moth tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and watch the other Halloween videos. And if you're interested in everything else that I did this season, please check me out on Instagram where I have all of my looks done. There's going to be a total of like 42 of them. So keep that in mind. That thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye. Ow.